It looks like this, for those of you who might recognize those composers and or uh, particular works. So uh, in the time I have, I mean, I wish I had an hour, I'd just play the whole thing for you because quite frankly, I need the practice. <laughs> but <laughs> instead I'll do about 10 seconds of each and explain as soon as I figure out how to switch cameras. There we go. Uh, how I put a program together. And it, it might look like a random selection of uh, compositions, but there actually is a little bit of logic to it. What I plan to do when the camera turns on at noon next Wednesday, I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to look at the piano. I'll just be ready to play. And when the director or videographer says go, this is what will happen. so on. I'm guessing you've all heard that before. Sometimes called Ave Maria because someone after Bach added words in a different melody and turned it into a beautiful version of Ave Maria. But uh, originally it was Bach's prelude in C. And the logic there is, first of all, it's Bach. <laughs> Who needs logic? It's Bach. <laughs> Secondarily, Bach was primarily a church organist in his time and he just happened to write a bunch of music that no one knew about until he was gone. Enormous volumes of music. Uh, so he wasn't known as a composer back then. He was just a church organist. Uh, so since this concert is in a church, uh, I don't play the organ, but like the organ will be visible behind me. So I, you know, why not play some Bach? So I'll play that prelude in C and then I'll play the prelude in C minor followed by the fugue in C minor. So here's the prelude in C minor followed by the fugue in C minor. Etc. And then the fugue. Fugue, in case you don't know, is where one melody line chases another, kind of like do, re, mi, and then the next group starts do, re, mi. So did you hear how that one followed the other? So uh, it's a three-part fugue. There's another line that, that works its way in there. So it's very, very uh, lively and bouncy and beautiful fugue. So that's the Bach set. <laughs> and then uh, we move on, and I... I I often like to play things that aren't well known and uh, maybe even by composers that people barely know. And uh, so there's a couple of them in a row. One is called To a Wild Rose by a British composer, Edward McDowell. It's from a, a suite he wrote called Woodland Sketches. And then after that by a nearly unknown composer, a Brazilian, I think, composer, Rosita Melo, called Desde el Alma. Uh, I only speak a little Spanish, so I know what desde de means uh, is from the something, but I didn't know what Alma meant. So I looked it up and it means from the soul. She wrote this when she was 14 years old. I'm almost 70 and like I still don't know what the soul is. And she, she's 14, writes this beautiful piece called Desde el Alma, from the soul. So I'll play a tiny bit of To a Wild Rose a tiny bit of Desde del Alma, and then I'm going to have to skip to the end because I'm running out of time. So uh, this is a little bit of To a Wild Rose you might have heard. Sweet, huh? And this is From the Soul, Desde el Alma by Rosita Bello. And so on. It's a very, very sweet piece. 
So let's jump to the end. I'm going to uh, close the concert. Um, when I play live, I usually like to go out with a bang and big loud thing and a big loud ending. And sometimes it gets everybody on their feet, which is really fun. Since it's online and uh, since the news these days is, can be stressful, <laughs> I thought I'd end it with something really, really mellow. Uh, and this is the very, very beautiful Impromptu in G-flat by Schubert. Uh, and as soon as I stop playing, I'm done uh, with this speech, that is. <laughs>